Now let's go for a bogey dope at four. Dark star in field. One, one. Request bogey dope. Okay, so apparently I still have some work to do when it comes to getting those aircraft to spawn. Or it could just be that they don't have radar contact. I'm going to fly out here to... I know where the area is. Yeah, and I can see them visually out there. So I think I just need to do some work on positioning that AWACS aircraft so that it's far enough away that it's never apparent to a player. Because that's sort of anachronistic and well, obviously wouldn't be applicable to a 1954 scenario. Okay, there we go. There's the notification that I'm entering an air-to-air -air training zone that I can terminate the engagement by going to the F-10 menu. And if I go to F-10, okay, I have infield flight, knock it off, let's head back to Nellis. And what happened there is when I entered this zone, the AI for these, I'm sort of torn between having these be F-86s or MiG-15s. Okay, so they're giving me another, yeah, I have two separate groups of MiGs up right now. So we'll have to figure out why they didn't... Yeah, why did Dark Star not pick up on them until I was out here near this group? They were physically present. There's no reason they shouldn't have. But what happened there was once I entered the zone, the restriction that I had set up on air-to-air -air engagements for the MiGs was lifted so they can now... So they just sort of uh, push from their orbit and fly back towards me. And it also set my flight up. Okay, there's a 6 for 80. Yep. And that also set my flight up to be immortal, so I'm not going to get shot down by these guys. Okay, there's the flight that I'm on right now. 234 for 16, 21,000 flanking. Yep, and again, yeah, same group. So I don't know, that didn't go exactly as I had envisioned, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's good enough within the confines of this. Okay, that's Uzi 1 calling in visual tally band on one of these. One of the other things I was going to check here was to make sure that none of the other aircraft really get sort of tangled up with this engagement that I have right here, and I have boy, I have completely lost sight of those guys. They were right there. Okay, so 2 has contact Uzi. Yeah, I thought I had set it up so that Uzi flight would ignore these aircraft, and I'll go flight engage bandits. Okay, there we go. Tally, my right. Okay, MiG-15. It was just the one that I saw. And three doesn't have them in sight at all. Now three has them in sight. Okay, I'm just going to go for altitude here. And see if I can manage this. Okay, there's a MiG. Okay, come on around. See if I can get a shot. If I can if I can pull. Okay, got some hits. Okay, good enough on that one. Okay, I've got my flights down below me. One of my guys is on. Okay, there's another MiG. I'm just going to keep my nose high. Not try to turn with anything. Okay, that's a Sabre on a MiG. So two MiGs are smoking at this point. Okay, there goes four engaging. A saber right down there below me. Okay, so I know there were four MiGs up. Where are the other two? Hopefully, hopefully not right behind me. Okay, nothing. Okay, just the the one smoking down below me. Actually, two of them down below me now. Are you a saber or a MiG? Too far away to tell. I will come on down because that's where, well, that's where the AI fight always eventually ends up.
Okay, and two's Winchester. Okay, there's another one that just, okay, that one just went in. Okay, another one right there. They put my nose down. Let's see what this one is first, I guess. Saber? I actually couldn't tell. Okay, well, let me call that good. Two called in Winchester. I'm about ready to call this quits anyway, so let's go for F10. Okay, two's rejoining by default, so F10. Okay, infield flight, knock it off. Let's head back, and what that should have done is restrict the MiGs from air-to-air -air engagement. So the MiGs should disengage at this point and then just go back onto their route, which at this point will just be to recover uh, back at... Actually, I have them set up to recover back to McCarran since their red aircraft... I can't have them recover back to Nellis, which I would ideally do. Okay, so that should have been the last of the F-10 menu items, and it should just be a matter now of contacting Nellis ATC. So F-5, uh, Nellis inbound, one, one, inbound on channel 3. And I will also... Okay, 069 for 45, runway 21. I'll have to play with the weather to get... Okay, never mind, that's QFE, 28... Uh, 2801. So if I set my altimeter to the QFE setting, then it's going to have a zero altitude as the field altitude. Uh, QFE as opposed to... was it? QNH? Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go back to channel 1 and I'm going to go to flight, rejoin F7. Flight, join up. And that should at the very least get 3 and 4 joined back up. I'll have to go back and tackle you and check what should have happened there was my flight was immortal, so any hits on my flight wouldn't have registered, but I had the MiGs, and I'm sort of on the fence about this, whether to make the MiGs immortal or not, you know, it's all just sort of imagination. You're imagining that you're engaging a Sabre flight out of Nellis, just flying a local sortie. I'm going to uh, go safe on all my armaments, which is a setup for recovery here. So, you ideally would not be shot down yourself if they did happen to get some rounds off on you but then from a gameplay point of view would you want those aircraft if you do shoot them down to actually no kidding be shot down and I, I think the answer for now is yes but that's one of those I guess I'll have to think about although it doesn't really make that much of a difference as long as I make it clear in the briefing that you know what's simulated and what is real because no matter how you set anything up in a situation like this, especially, you know, just the entire concept itself, simulating something from 1954 on a, you know, a modern Las Vegas map, you know, no matter what you do, there are going to be compromises to be made, especially when simulating a training environment within a, basically, a combat simulation. There are just always going to be little trade-offs, and, well, I'll put some more brain power onto that one and think about it, but I'll probably leave it exactly as it was, with just my flight immortal and then them not immortal, and then the way that it's set up is that even if I don't give that knock it off call, once my flight does get out of that little air-to-air -air training zone, it automatically turns off the enemy AI, so they're not just constantly harassing me as I come into RTV, which hopefully that's exactly what happened, and I'll be able to tell using TACView. I have another air-to-air -air training location set up, on the other side of Nellis, so I'll have to think about that one also to consider whether or not that one's even needed. Well, I guess it will depend. Okay, let me go ahead and go back to channel three and request landing through Nellis Tower. In field one one, request landing. No, kick out the speed brakes and come back down to a reasonable airspeed here. And I'll just do a straight-in approach. Really, all I want to do at this point is get the aircraft onto the ground and see how the AI reacts and see if the AI goes back to the parking spaces that I assigned them to go back to. Okay, down to 260. I forget exactly what the F-86, like, minimum flight speed is. I'm on Channel 3, am I not? Yep, Channel 3, UHF. 
Okay, so I'll go flaps down. I'll just leave it full down. I think it's I think it's actually 180. And actually, since I'm a little bit too high, let me pull the flaps back up, speed brake back in, and I'll just do uh, I'll just do like a little overhead brake type thing right here, which I didn't intend to do. I'll just brake to the left here once I'm over the touchdown point or nearabouts. And I'm not going to try to fly this aggressively. It's been so long since I've flown the F-86. The last thing I want to do is stall the aircraft right now. So again, go flaps down. I'll wait till I roll out downwind to get the gear. I'll just plug in a little bit more throttle. Okay, there we go. There was a little bit of delay right there. Probably had something to do with other AI aircraft in the pattern between when I called request landing and I actually got the call. So let's go gear down. Okay, and I'll just do some trim here to keep myself under control. A little more throttle. And I didn't, I didn't refresh myself on what a reasonable airspeed would be to fly this in. So I'm overshooting a little bit where I wanted to be. I'll pull this around a little bit more aggressively. I think, I think about 115 for a touchdown speed will be about where I want to be. Okay, so confirm gear down. About, yeah, I'll be able to take it way down the runway. Here. It's not going to be that big of a deal if I do so. I'll even go speed brakes out. Yeah, I won't have any any trouble at all getting it stopped, but I grossly overestimated the uh, landing speed I need to shoot for. Okay, there we go. Touchdown, and I'll get on the brakes pretty pretty aggressively here. Although it's, it's not really needed, F-86 or any of these older style aircraft are so are so much lighter than an A-10, F-15, or any of those other any other aircraft that we have in DCS. It doesn't take long at all to get them stopped. Okay, so speed brakes in, and get my flaps up. I'll exit the runway and just pull back into my parking location and wait for all the other aircraft to arrive. Hopefully. Now, at this point, let me pick the commentary up after the fact. Everything up until this point has been recorded in real time as I flew the mission, as well as always the case. But the track really desynced on me there. It actually started to desync before this engagement or the MiG engagement started, but I was able to piece enough together to get us onto the ground. So I'm going to, with the benefit of already having edited the video together and already looked at the track, kind of go over what happened and what I'm going to change. But we see Springfield fly, the Target 2 aircraft, and my fly getting airborne initially in the mission. We can also see if I come back here, Springfield 2 and Uzi fly. This is just a another AI controlled flight that's going to do the same thing that I'm going up there to do. Just added to have more radio chatter and just a little bit of flavor to the mission. Now everything up until this point went I think very very well when it came to the timing I was going for and the overall feel and I think I put enough in this mission that actually I think I probably put too much in this mission. I don't think that a typical player just flying this the first time through would be able to or necessarily want to do everything that I did with the mission briefing, the little guided tour, the refresher training, the little engagement there on the targets, the MIG engagement, but I would rather overkill on a mission like this than just have not enough going on to keep someone occupied. And I made the timing such that if a person just wanted to get airborne, fly straight up here at full throttle, shoot the target and go home, that would be an option. You would only be waiting maybe two minutes up at Dogbone Lake waiting for the target to spawn. So yeah, I'm happy with it so far. Now I'm to the point where the target itself is going to spawn. Up until this point, the target tow aircraft has just been a single blue F-86. Now let me kind of show you just for the heck of it what I did here. So it gets to a certain point, the blue aircraft goes away and it's replaced by a red aircraft with a MiG-15 just sort of set to follow it around, two separate flights in other words. 
and I tried a whole lot of different things. I tried to get a, ideally I would have had a blue F86 trail by a red MiG-15, but yeah, this ended up being the, if not the easiest way, the, well, I guess in the end it is the easiest way. It's just not easy. And I think overall it, it captures the look I was going for. Now we get to our first pass here for gunnery. Now let me kind of zoom in here and slow things down and talk about this for a second. And I'll back up and switch views to the sort of cockpit view that we have in attack view. So at this point, I'm tracking the target and my gun sight pipper is in front of the turret. What I meant to do here and what I tried to do, it just didn't work both passes, was have the gun sight pipper in back of the target and then pull to drag the pipper up to the target itself. So what I ended up doing was having to, at the very last minute, you'll see me sort of roll the aircraft right there, trying to bring that pipper back and down and I'll back up again, where if the pipper were behind the target, all it had to have done was pulled. It, it's a lot easier to pull that gun sight pipper, that reticle, up to the target than to let it drift back to the target. So that's what I should have done on both passes. I didn't do a very good job of it at all on either pass, but that just all comes down to, well, practice. Now, fast forwarding to the second pass, and like I mentioned on the first pass, a minimum 15 degree angle off for this competition. But you can see here, I'm at 45 degrees plus off of this guy, so it's not really a tracking shot I'm setting up here. It just turns out to be sort of a very high deflection, almost like a snapshot, where I'm just sort of trying to time it just right to have it fly through the pipper. I'm not really tracking the target at this angle, so let's see how this does, and I'll pause it right there. Now, I think I did miss it low and just a little bit to the right. Now, this could come down to many things. I might have just been lined up there. I might have just been a little bit late squeezing the trigger to that second detent. But one other thing that occurs to me here is the sight setting that I had for the target speed selector switch, that TR low high switch down the A4 sight selector unit. And you saw me earlier put it into the TR position. So that would be ideal for a situation like this. If the target aircraft and my aircraft were at about a two to three ratio airspeed to airspeed, and in this case, the target aircraft was about 165 knots. That means that I ideally would have been at about 275. But I'm looking up here at the telemetry, I was at about 545 knots indicated right here. So not even close. And I, in that case, should have gone with the low setting where I have a, a low speed target versus my high speed aircraft. The ideal ratio there for that setting is three to one. So this, in fact, would have been even too fast for that setting to really work. And if you ever run into a situation like this where you are pretty sure you made a good pass, but the rounds just aren't falling on target in the F-86, keep in mind this is a 60-year-old gun sight we're dealing with here. It's not supposed to be that accurate other than at very, very specific conditions. So you can do everything absolutely perfectly. Not that I did do everything absolutely perfectly here by any means, but you can do everything right and still miss in the F-86 or any aircraft that applies to any avionics system or especially in this case with the just old old gun sights yeah so from here i'll speed things up okay i check out that's going to make springfield 2 and uzi push into the area and then once springfield 2 you can see that f86 coming in once that target spawns then uh, springfield 1 my target 2 aircraft turns back into a blue f86 and just rtbs and then uzi comes in and engages that MiG, it's really, I mean, a person wouldn't really notice that flying it just from the cockpit, but it's, I think, good just to have some other stuff up there to add some flavor and just have some additional radio calls and just other stuff going on in the background. So I come in and make some air to ground gunnery passes here, and yeah, I really have nothing to note on these unless anything occurs to me just right here as I fly another circuit. Okay, so there we go. We see Colt fly come in, they call in on station. And then once I leave the area around the range, yeah, then Colt Flight is clear to move in and they start to drop some bombs and start to drop some rockets on, yeah, that uh, bombing, conventional bombing circle. So one, two, three, four, and they just set up in a racetrack and just start to go to town on those guys. Now from there, I go ahead and exit the area to the southwest up to another one of these optional items that we can run into. I have two groups of MiGs, one here, one on the other side of Nellis, and I'm going to ditch the GCI aspect of this. I didn't really like the way that the interaction with the AWACS went. There's just too much that could go wrong with that. So I'm going to have it more clearly marked on the map and probably just add some audio to direct the player to exactly where to go if they want to get into this. But it would come in here, I spot the guys finally, and then my flight starts to engage. But let me see, for my piece of the puzzle here, so I come in, I see this guy, and 
I'm careful throughout of this to pick my fight. You know, I could just run in there and just start to turn in circles like, well, like everybody else here seems to be doing. But I come in, I maintain energy, I come in, just make a hit and run attack on that one, pull back out. If I had turned with this guy, I would have just been in there, low energy, low airspeed, with three other MiGs in there around me, so I stay up high, I just watch what's going on and pick my attack. Now, and that's a, a good illustration of the point right there, you know, coming up here, I did have a MiG that was coming after me, but I stayed up high, I just flew in a way that would, no matter what I did, deny anybody that was trying to climb after me a shot, just like I did on that, on that MiG, I come down. I have plenty of energy, there's no way that this MiG, even though he was on me, on my tail, was going to catch up because he started in a low energy state, he was just down there turning, I had high energy, high altitude, and there's just nothing that can touch you if you stay up here, here he comes again trying to catch up with me, and yeah, if you do it that way, nothing can touch you, and I think the reason that I didn't go back in there and try to do more right there was that, A, I was tired and I was ready just to go back and B, I couldn't really visually identify anything and that's not a VR complaint, that's just the way things are in DCS, that's the reason that I really don't do air to air and it is a lot better with the visibility enhancement, the w enhancements that we have but yeah I just couldn't see well enough in there to pick out a good fight so I come off and RTB and you can see the other MiG flight up there, if I continued on out there I could have just repeated that entire sequence except with this MiG group. So at that point, everybody is just RTBing and it's just letting the mission play out from here. So that's going to do it. I think this is coming along pretty well. Just some more little tweaks to make and this one will be, well, completely done. So I'll call this one good here and move on to some air to ground stuff. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.